The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's The Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. George Campbell, Ramsey personality, host of The Fine Print, a podcast on Ramsey Networks, is my co-host today. We invite your calls about your life, about your relationships, your mental health, your boundaries, your career, your work, and your money. We talk about all of them here on The Ramsey Show. It's a free call, and some say the advice is worth exactly what you pay for it. The phone number is 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. Colton starts off this hour in Amarillo, Texas. Hey, Colton, how are you? I'm doing very well, Dave. How about yourself? Better than I deserve, sir. How can we help? <laughs> uh, so I actually just moved back to the United States from Australia, and uh, my girlfriend is very adamant about me getting a credit card. She says I need it to survive in America, and she's worried that if I don't get one down the future, if we decide to get married, that it might bite us in the butt when it comes to getting a mortgage and all that. I don't want one. You actually helped my parents get out of credit card debt uh, a few years ago, and I just don't know what to do about it. Hmm. I just, I don't know how to approach her about talking about that and explaining it without sounding like a jerk. What have the conversations been like when you say, hey, I don't want a credit card. I don't believe in in going into debt. I think there's another way. What is her reaction? Um, Well, she's kind of how do I put it? She doesn't, I guess, from my interpretation, she thinks that I don't understand what it is because, as you know, everyone in America is living off of credit card debts and car payments. And, and she thinks that's a good she, thing. Um, she thinks it's a necessary thing. Mm. How old, how old are you? Is, uh, we're both 22. Okay. How long have you been dating? Uh, about About two years now. Yeah. What other things is she condescending to you about? Um, let's see. I guess sometimes I'm a, I'm kind of a, when it comes to emotions, I'm a very um, emotional guy when it comes to showing love and stuff. She's not always that kind of person. Um, she, it's a, uh, I, I really don't know. Yeah. How, how, how long did you say you've been dating again? About two years. Two years? Wow. How long, and you've been back in the States for two years? Uh, no, I actually just moved back here in the very beginning of December. Uh, I actually threaded the needle uh, getting out of Australia. That so was it was kind of a long-distance relationship up until the last few months. Um, so we actually met as missionaries overseas. I, I can't say exactly where, but and then we started dating about a year after departing. So Okay. This, this is going to be a conversation where you need to maybe show her some information, not to prove her wrong, but just to show her that mm-hmm. there is another way. And so one of the easiest yep. ways to do that, we did an episode on the fine print about this very topic called The Dirty Truth Behind Your Credit Score. We also did one on credit card rewards. So depending on what angle, it sounds like she's saying, well, you need debt to survive. And if you need debt, you need a high credit score, and therefore you need to use the credit card. And so on a logical sense, we can show her that you don't need those things, and I've gotten a mortgage without a credit score. And so it can be done, but she's going to need to get some new information in order to maybe see that. What were you guys missionaries for, Bank of America? Uh, No, actually. Christian um, missionaries, right? No, with uh, Youth with a Mission. Yeah, Youth with a Mission. Christian missionaries. So Bible-believing. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So let me help you with this, then. Let's let's maybe uh, have this discussion through a different lens. Okay? Okay. I would uh, challenge either one of you, as I have people for decades, you wouldn't be the first two, to find me one time in Scripture that God used debt to deliver his people or bless his people. Show me one positive reference to debt in Scripture. By the way, I'll help you with this. Here's a hack. It's not there. It's not a sin listed in Scripture. But 100% of the time that, de- that debt is mentioned in the Bible is a negative reference. You're a fool. You're a slave. 
You're impulsive. These are the things that come around the word debt as you read through and study the scriptures. And there's hundreds and hundreds of references to debt in the scripture, and they're all negative. So if we're going to look at this through the lens of the Bible, which your founder, Lauren Cunningham, would tell you to have done at Youth with a Mission, very familiar mm-hmm. with your ministry mm-hmm. and, uh, and an admirer of the ministry, by the way. But, um, Thank you. But the, uh, 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 you know, if, if you look at this through the lens of Scripture, there's nothing in there that says that debt is the way to win. As a matter of fact, it says it's the way to lose. Now, it's, an, it's not a salvation issue, and it's not a sin. It's just, biblically speaking, stupid. Yes. That's what it amounts to. And so maybe that's a way to have the discussion. Uh, and then you can also go at it with uh, secular or mainstream information like George is talking about, because here's the thing. You're 22 years old, okay? Mm-hmm. She's 22 years old. She does not have all the answers to the money equation. I can assure you of this, sir. Um, as a matter of fact, she has almost none of the answers, and she's pretty condescending about the fact that she knows nothing. So here's the thing. You can get a mortgage without a credit score. It's called manual underwriting. If you want to buy a car, you should pay cash if you want to become wealthy and build wealth. Yes, sir. That's uh, that's actually one of the arguments that I have, and I haven't made it yet, because uh, she's yeah. paying off a vehicle. Yeah, and I, which was I stupid. Refused. Now, it I've was. been stupid, too. I've had car payments. I've had lots of payments. I was, did a lot of stupid stuff. That's what qualifies me to teach this, is I've Looked, I got stupid a bunch of it in the rearview mirror. And, and so, um, I mean, I, I made it an art form for a while. So, I, you know, her little car payment is not nearly as stupid as I've been. But, uh, and then lastly is this, that, you know, the thing as, as a, a father of grown children, which is an oxymoron, as a father of grown ups, um, uh, the thing that concerns me the most about this conversation is how condescending she is towards you from a relationship standpoint, as if you're a doofus and she has it all figured out, which from my seat is kind of funny, laughable, except except how it plays out in your relationship. So I think that that needs to be addressed in your relationship going forward, that you guys can have a conversation where you have equal footing intellectually, spiritually, to have a, com- a, a calm, good, mature discussion about something instead of her going, well, you just don't know, little man. Well, you're freaking 22, lady. I mean, seriously, I got socks older than you. So you this know, is ingrained just, in their in their brains. It's ridiculous, you know. But if it's a values thing, it may not work out long term. Yeah. Money fights, money problems, number one cause of divorce. So either you guys get on the same page or this may not be the right fit forever. Sorry. Yeah. That, that's a possibility, too. Uh, it may be your signal. This is the Ramsey Show. If you're not using Pure Talk for your wireless, you're paying too much. Pure Talk gives you the same great 5G coverage on the same 5G network as one of the big guys for half the cost. The average family saves over $800 a year. Go to puretalk.com and choose the affordable plan that's right for you. With their 30-day risk-free guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Go to puretalk.com and enter the promo code RAMSEY to save 50% off your first month. We are so excited. Smart Conference is back this fall, October 22nd. We're bringing this world-class event to Dallas, Texas. 
There'll be thousands of you there. You'll spend the whole day getting the tools and inspiration you need to be smart. You go home believing you can meet your goals. You can build wealth. You can grow as a leader. You can have mental health and wellness. You can deal with your relationship struggles. You can get the job of your dreams. Yes, you can. And you can have the marriage of your dreams, too. Rachel Cruz, Dr. John Deloney, Ken Coleman, George Camel, Christina Ellis, Pedro Latore, and special guests Craig and Amy Groeschel, good friends of ours, pastor of the largest church in America today, LifeChurch.tv over in Oklahoma City. They'll be speaking on marriage. So it is quite a day. You're going to leave smarter in every area of your life. You know, there's so much trash, filth, and nastiness going into people's brains out there, George. Crap is everywhere going in. And if you put crap in your brain all day, your brain will be crap. You need to put something right. smart in your brain all day long on October 22nd in Dallas. This is going to be fun. It's it's like drinking from the fire hose. If you've ever wanted a taste of what we do here at Ramsey Solutions, this is the event for you. We're going 8 to 5, nonstop. We cover all the areas of life that are looming in your brain that give you that anxiety from money to relationships to career. And uh, powerhouse speakers, of course, with all of our Ramsey personalities being there. And I've got to host this event for many, many years, and it truly is the, my favorite event that we do. And now you'll be one of the keynotes. And I get to speak for the there very first time. So that's one reason to go not a Definitely. great one but yeah. it's one no it, it's it's a great reason it's a great we're gonna reason. have a great it's time. gonna be an incredible talk i've seen the outline and a texas crowd i mean there's nothing yeah, like yeah, it game on baby i am ready for this yeah i'm so excited well, to get, get back out here and get to be with human beings and everything yes man so this is october, a destination event october 22nd listen the ticket prices went on sale the tickets went on sale today so the prices are at early bird specials. That means, uh, oh, wait a minute. They're going to be gone real soon, like by the time I finish talking about this probably. But um, you better get on there and get it. RamseySolutions.com slash events. Get your tickets October 22nd. We're going to be in Dallas. You're going to be smarter if you come. It's a smart conference. That's true. No one leaves dumber. I can tell you that much. I can tell you that. I can tell you that. So, George, I think we need to go back for a second because I had um, with our, our last caller. Two, two youngsters, okay? But uh, y'all kind of felt me rise up about that. I felt it. Yeah, yeah. And it wasn't caffeine. Here's the thing. 30 years of doing this and people being condescending to other people who want to live a debt-free life and build wealth the shortest, fastest possible way, the way that actually works. Instead, these other people are stealing their hope. Mm. And regardless of your age... That, condes- that, 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 that condescending attitude that I'm going to look down my nose and go, oh, you just don't understand. You, you, you poor little people, you just don't understand. And th- there's something about hope stealers, regardless of whether you're a sweet little 22-year-old girl or whether you're a crusty old 61-year-old jerk like me. If you're a hope stealer, I'm going to rise up on you. That's what I'm rising up on. Because that just, that ticks me off. Yeah. Keeps people from, you know, and it's such a passive aggressive form of persuasion. that it, And it keeps people from living a wonderful life. And, and you know, and, and the problem is that, that not only are they arrogant and condescending, these people that do these kinds of things, but they, um, they're wrong. <laughs> that is true. Well, what it comes down to is they have a fixed mindset, and their brain says, what I know to be true will always be true, and I don't have a different picture of what this life looks like. And because of my upbringing and my experience, what I know from culture, this is just how it has to go. And we're out here preaching every day to people saying, there's a different way. Over here, look, there's hope. You don't have to stay in debt forever. You can build wealth. The little man can get ahead. And so that's what we do every single day is trying to help people get that growth mindset to give them that hope, give them the actions they can take to change their life. And those people just don't believe that they can change. But you're just, you know, you're just such, you and Rachel are just so much nicer about it than I Well, am. yeah. I don't know. Maybe it'll come with age. I, or maybe you, 30 years would just get disgusted. And I just, because I just, it's just, because I can see this great young man who's been out there serving God with youth with a mission, coming home and having a wonderful life. But no, you don't understand you don't know how life works, you poor little thing. Which, she just came off the mission field, too. Yeah. I mean, it's not like like she'd been here 
learning something different. No. But what happens is the credit card becomes a gateway drug to all kinds of other types of debt. And you go, well, if I'm okay with payments over here, what's wrong with a car payment? And what's wrong with having debt over here and a personal loan and the mortgage? And so this starts to crush your financial life. And then you get upset because you don't have any money at the end of the month. See, when, when you say gateway drug in your nice voice it sounds yeah. so sweet so pleasant when i say it it sounds like i just i, I just cut somebody's head off it's a gateway drug you know you're like it's a gateway you know, drug dave <laughs> listen i'm like dare okay that's me i'm trying to help the youth you're of america you're just a nice guy that's stay difference. off of drugs that's a stay don't do drugs dare and we're going to start a dare program. We ingrain that into society, but when it comes to debt, we're not doing a great job because it's the parents telling Just the kids. Just say no. They Just need say a credit no. Card. That was Nancy Reagan's thing, right? Just say no. Just say no to credit cards. Just say no to credit cards. There you go. <laughs> That's the new campaign. <laughs> you can take that one for free. You know what? It's old enough we could restart it with the 22-year-olds because they've never heard of it. No. So it's vintage to them. It it's amazing. It's like retro. <laughs> Maybe I'm older than I thought. Oh, too fun. Oh, too good stuff. Fun. Open phones at 888-825-5225. You jump in, we'll talk about your life and your money. Pamela is with us in North Carolina. Hi, Pamela. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hello, sir. How are you doing today? Better than I deserve. What's up? <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. Um, yes. Um, so what is going on with me? Um, I'm on baby step two, and I have a beat of car. And um, I've been using that to to, to work um, my my side hustle, so I can you know um, snowball some 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 money and pay off my debt. Um, just a couple of days ago, while I was on my side hustle, um, my, my car cut off. I couldn't cut it back on, so um, got got it towed. And I just received news from the mechanic that um, the head gasket is blown. And it's going to be thousands of dollars to repair, which um, I do not have. And I was just wondering if maybe um, you guys had a solution. <laughs> Man, I'm sorry. That just rips your, that just makes your stomach hurt. Oh, yeah. I've been there. And the stupid car breaks at exactly the wrong time. Like it's a country song. I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah. You know, oh my gosh. Yes, sir. That's unfortunate, mm -hmm. Pamela. So, have you got a quote from anyone else? Is this a normal price people pay for head gaskets? Yeah. That's thousands? Yeah, it's gone. Mm. Well, it sounds like it's worth more than the car is. To, What's the, to what fix is the car stuff. worth? Um, um, I looked on, um, on um, Kelly Blue Book um, about a week or so ago, and I believe the, the um, it's between like, like, I think like 3400 and like five thousand fair market value is around four. Mm -hmm. And okay. um, it shouldn't, and, it shouldn't um, cost thousands to do a head gasket, but it might cost a thousand. Well, that that's that's what um, that's what uh, the mechanic was saying because I because I was anticipating thousands, and she's and um, she mentioned that yeah, it, it'll it'll they, they were talking about the labor, and the labor was already was already at two. Two thousand dollars. Yes. Whoa. Yes, Labor sir. to do a head job on a four thousand dollar car. I don't think so. Yes. I don't think so. Where where did you take this? The dealer? Um, no, sir. Um it's, it's, it's like I said, it's a beater. So um okay. I, I I took it to, to my mechanic, um took it to triple A. Yeah. Mm. I, hope, I, hope, I hope that was okay to say on go sure <laughs> on live, well, on okay. live radio. <laughs> it's, it's fine, that's fine. They're not mechanics, they're just your insurance plan. Um <laughs> Okay, I can't leave you on the side of the road going into a break with 15 seconds, uh, so we're going to take you up when we come right back and answer your questions. So hang on through this break. That's what it can feel like when your business is growing so fast you've outgrown your financial and accounting software. The faster you grow, the more likely you are to lose control of the numbers. And here's the reality. If you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business. That's why we use NetSuite by Oracle, the number one cloud financial system. 
Over 28,000 companies use NetSuite by Oracle, including Ramsey Solutions, because NetSuite gives us a single view of everything we need to make daily decisions. Whether you're making a few million to hundreds of millions a year, NetSuite gives you the visibility and control of the things you need to grow, like your financials, inventory, HR, planning, budgeting, and more, all in one dashboard. Go to netsuite.com slash Ramsey right now to get their free white paper, Jumpstart Your CFO Career. Camel Ramsey personality is my co-host today. Pamela in Wilmington, North Carolina is on the line. We're talking with her going into the break. Sure, the head blew on her car. She's, she's got to have a head gasket put on. They're quoting her $2,000 labor alone on a three dollars $4,000 car. Um, and so she's stuck. You were using the car you said for your side hustle. How are you getting to work on your regular job? Well, I um I have a a, a roommate and um, she dropped me off the past couple of days. Okay, and so that's your short term plan. You have any money saved at all? Um, well, like I said, I was on, uh, I'm on baby step two. I did have the a thousand dollars saved. Okay, um, but we had a um. We, we we had a, a, a we had a, a, a another roommate and a huge water bill in the office, and, and they were talking like cutting it off um, on Monday. So I, I I took a portion of my um, of, of that of, of that emergency fund to pay to, for the water bill, so we would mm. still have water. I'm sorry. Okay, so what do you it's make? Okay. You, what do you make? What's your income? I make a little less than um, than thirty two thousand a year. Okay. All right. Um, so what we've got, you're going to have to fix this with an uncomfortable short-term solution because you don't have a lot of options. And then you're going to mm-hmm. work towards a better long-term solution. So um, right. it sounds like, okay, number one, I'd like to get another opinion on this car from somebody. If you can get someone else to give you a second opinion on it, a different price. This price sounds okay. high. It sounds high to me. Um, okay. And it depends. What kind of car is it? It's a 2000 Lexus. Okay. That, it just, it, it feels high. Okay. Uh, for $2,000 okay. labor alone for a head job. I could be wrong, but that feels high. And you don't have mm-hmm. it, so it, it doesn't matter. But if you, if you could get a, if you can get a price that you could scratch up while you ride with your roommate to work and fix it, that'd be great. That's rule. That's thing one. Thing two is if that doesn't work, you're going to sell the car as is for a couple grand probably is all you're going to get for it. And you're going to take that $2,000 and whatever other money you can scratch together and buy you a garage sale car to get around in right now. That's your short-term solution. And then as fast as possible, run the side hustle. As fast as possible, run as many hours as you can and move up out of that up into a three or $4,000 car, all with cash. Please do not let this force you into a long-term problem, which is called a car payment. And a lot of people in your situation jump from the fire into the frying pan. And um, are from the frying pan into the fire, whichever way you want to want to run that metaphor. But, um, you know, and, and that's what I don't want you to do here. So get a second opinion. If you if that confirms the pricing on the lay, on the repair and I'm wrong, which I might be, uh, then sell the car and buy a car for cash with whatever cash you can get in your hand. And that's going to be a, what we call a garage sale car. It's a car. It's a it's a, not a it, it's a car that's not much of a car. It's worse than the one you're driving, except that Which it is runs. hard to imagine. Except that it runs. And we're pausing the debt snowball while we pause try to everything. pile this up. Pa- pa- pause Just everything a until you can get yourself back into a decent car. Uh, by decent, I mean a four or $5,000 car here. Move it back up in car. You, you're in a situation where you cannot afford to have this kind of thing happen. And so you don't have any wiggle room, any margin. In the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage, Carl and Robin are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? Hey, great, Dave. Welcome. Where do you guys live? Uh, Half hour north of Detroit in Northville, 
Michigan. Got it. Well, yep. welcome to Nashville. Good to have you. And here to do a debt-free scream, how much have you paid off? Uh, well, uh, we started Financial Peace University class in uh, 2015, mm-hmm. and we had $399,000 in debt. Whoa. But in reality, we read your book in 2009 mm-hmm. after the 2008 real estate crash. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, we had a bunch of debt from uh, rental properties and, and such. And it was about $685,000. That so, you were had worked down to by what year did you say you went through FPU then? Uh, 2015. 15. Yeah. Okay. And so you got seven years to pay off 400 grand, right? Right. Okay. All right. Yep. Cool. What was your range of income during that time? Uh, between 170 to 230. Wow. What do you guys do for a living? We're both engineers at Ford. Oh, very Ford good. Ford Transmissions. Very good. Yep. Good for you. The Blue Oval. There you go. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Sounds like you've been there a while. Yep. About, all right. Yep. Very good. So you paid off all the rental debt, and then when you went through Financial Peace University, you decided to attack the rest of this. What kind of debt was the 400? Um, well, it was the rental debt. Actually, we didn't pay it off, but we, you know, we did the Dave-ish plan, I guess. Kind until of, then. Until then, yeah. So uh, we weren't making enough progress, and um, we, uh, we, we were looking for something else. So then we took the class, and we, uh, we really, you know, got gazelle intense, sold everything, bought a Bought a 1997 Buick Riviera as our, as our Dave car. You bought the so. enemy's car. <laughs> yes. You bought a General Motors car and you wow. work at Ford. Yes, yes. But if you're going to drive a junker, drive the enemies, right? <laughs> it was comfortable and it was fast. <laughs> it was oh, fast. that car. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Good. Okay, so then you work your way through this. Now, is this your home and everything now? Yes, sir. You're, yep. uh, so we're looking at weird people. You're 100% debt free. Yep, 100% debt free. Yes. I love it. That is so very cool. So what's this house worth? Uh, it's probably worth about 500 yeah. I think. Do you yeah. own some of the rental property still? Uh, we sold uh, three or two of them, and mm-hmm. we still have one of them. That's paid for. That's paid and for. And what's it worth? Yeah, about 150 Okay. Yeah. So you're probably also Baby Steps millionaires simultaneously then. Uh, yeah, we are. Yeah. Way to yeah. go, guys! Amazing. Thank you. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's incredible. I mean, they got seven hundred thousand in real estate. So yeah. You know you that. You know close. they're. You know they're. Uh, and they're engineers. So I imagine four hundred one can number one number one uh, career field of millionaires. Yes. Awesome guys. Yeah. And they're I both love it. engineers. That's this is incredible. <laughs> there you so go. what kind of sacrifices were you guys making? Because you said you were Dave Ish, and then you went Gazelle Intense. What did that change look like? Um. Well, we we just uh, you know scratched and clawed, and we we. Um, you know, we ate at home a lot, and uh, you know these boys really kicked in and helped with uh, rental repairs and um, uh, car repairs, and uh, you know maintaining our home for us. You know, uh, you know with the help of us, and um, it, you know they didn't they didn't want the best of the best. They didn't want the best shoes or the you know even though we you know Northville's kind of a ritzy area mm-hmm. you know in Michigan there and mm-hmm. and they um they really uh they live like no us. one else yeah yeah so they, they could live like no one else how does it feel to be completely debt free it's uh-huh. wonderful yeah what do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is um it it's it's kind of when you're going along with the plan you might feel like you've made mistakes or you might want to give up or and i just tell people that they give yourself grace no one's perfect Uh um still keep your eye on the plan and and you can do it like have some faith in yourself and and you know everybody makes mistakes and just just keep going just just keep doing it it's it's she, worth she's it. like a great mom can yeah, you tell i can tell you can tell she's a great mom i love it the boys are all agreeing <laughs> yeah you guys are awesome this is very cool way to go you guys way to go so very awesome good stuff all right so uh Man, I'm telling you, this is amazing. So you went to Financial Peace University at your church. Yep, and uh, we want to thank Steve Cooper for uh, for running it for us. And, um, yeah, it was at St. Edith Catholic Church in Livonia, Michigan. Yeah. Ah, very yeah. good. Yeah. He's a very, very good. good teacher. Yeah. Very good. Good stuff. Well, it makes a difference. It makes a big difference to be plugged in with other people while you're do- starting and doing the journey, too, for that matter. Oh, so, yeah. Very good. Way to go, guys. Well, we got a copy of Baby Steps Millionaires to celebrate the fact that you are one. Yeah. You'll read about people in there just like you. Yeah. I like it. Well done. Very good. And a copy of Total Money Makeover for you to give away to someone and get them moving and get them on their journey. So, All right. Congratulations. Thank you. We're yeah. very oh, proud of you. Yeah. All right. And the boys' names are? 
Uh, Calvin, Reed, and Albert. Albert. All right, here we go. Carl, Robin, Calvin, Reed, and Albert from the Detroit, Michigan area. 400000 paid off in seven years. House and everything, making 170 to 230 Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, one. We're debt-free! Debt free! Yes, you are! Done. This is the Ramsey Show. Thank you for joining us, America. George Camel, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today as we talk about your life and your money. Julia is with us in Portland, Maine. Hi, Julia. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Thank you so much. It's an honor to speak with you both today. You too. What's up? So I am on Baby Step 6, and I have a rental property. Do you recommend that I include 15% of my rental income? In no. my retirement contribution? No. Okay, good. Because I want to throw everything at my mortgage. Yeah, not everything. But do you, sure you, you have other income, income, don't you? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. I have a regular job. So what does your regular what job pay? pay? What does it pay? Uh, so I'm a freelancer, and I make about 115000 a year. Nice. So, Julia, the point is not the magic of... 15% works, but if you do 14, you're going to be poor. I mean, it's not it's not that precise. The idea is to put a large chunk, which 15% is, but not so large that you can't get your other debts paid off on your house. And that's where the 15% came from. Because when I first started this, I would have people doing, they're putting 25% away, or they're putting 1%, mm -hmm. or they're putting 1% away. And so what I ended up doing was we were, you know, we got with the financial coaches that here on, on our staff and we ran a bunch of scenarios and said, okay, what if you were this income and you save 15%, would you be okay? And this age, and what, what if you, if you saved 12% and if you save 17% and if you save 10% or 20% and we kind of went back and forth. And so what we've zoned in on is at most any age, at most any income, 15% is a good, healthy amount. But it's not a magic it. number. It's not a magic number. So, okay. you know, you see what I'm saying? So, so I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to tell yeah. you to do 15 because it's worked and it's a proven plan that lots and lots of people have done. Yeah. And, Julia, once you do pay off that mortgage and you're in baby step seven, you could increase that. If oh, you you're going to, use some to of that increase it Yeah, you max out everything. But right now we've got right. to get our priorities right. straight and, and paying off the house is A1. Yeah. That's but great question. Yeah, that, that's very good. But the point on these guidelines of these process people is, is, A, it's proven. Millions of people have done this, and it worked. And she wasn't trying to change it. She just getting clarification. B, um, some of these things are just based on some common sense principles. And this idea of baby step four being 15%, baby step four is put a good healthy amount on your retirement, but not so much that you can't find some spillover to put on your house and get your house paid off. But not so little that you end up with nothing in your retirement in a paid-for house. You have to dig the bushes up and eat them. Oh, yeah. Because you got no money. Yeah, and know. saving for a kid's college, you know. Yeah, you don't, exactly. You want to be able to you help gotta out you got to leave some money to spill over in the budget to five and six because five and six are – baby steps five and six are simultaneous with baby step four. And that's where the number comes from. And then it it's a bunch of – case studies and a bunch of possible scenarios that we ran out. And here's what's weird. You take somebody make it $20,000 a year. They say 15% and they never get a raise. They're still, they're not going to be rich, but, but they never really made any money. They've been at the poverty level. Yeah. And they still end up 
with a really nice nest egg. It's not about the amount of money. It's how much time that has to grow. Exactly. And even a little bit case. amount over a long period of time, it's amazing what can happen with compound growth. Yeah. And, and, and of course, we all know that where you are today is not your destiny. That, that life is a film strip. It's not a snapshot. And so you're, you're going to get better, get worse in, 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 a, in a lot of areas. Your health, your relationships, your money, your income, your career. And, and so it's not a static you never have a static situation either. But we ran the scenarios on static just because it was the easiest set of variables you to run. You never got an extra dime in your yeah. income. And are you still okay? Yeah. Yes, you're still okay. All right. Jennifer is with us in Raleigh. Hi, Jennifer. How are you? I'm doing fine, thanks. And how are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? So question is about whether we have too much life insurance. Um, we're in a unique situation in that we can't add life insurance once we drop it. Um, my husband is uninsurable, um, and so if what we have for life insurance was carried over from a previous employer, and we just carried on paying it, but we're kind of wondering if now if it's more than what we really need, and we could use those, you know, that, that money in a different place. Wow. Why is he uninsurable? He had a heart transplant. Oh, that'll do it. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> yeah, and we we checked, and yeah. they confirmed. Yeah, no, you. Yeah, can't, I, that, you that's can't. that's a tough one there. Yeah. So yeah. how's he doing? He's doing fantastic. How long uh, ago was he? Always. Uh, we're coming up on four years ago. Awesome. How old is he? He is fifty years old. That's amazing. That's so powerful. Yeah. Well, praise God. Yeah, it, that's awesome. Good. It was an amazing, um, long journey, but we made Man. it through, and he's doing fantastic. That's so a, we that's, should not that's complain. A, that's just, wow. Okay, so uh, why do you have too much life insurance? What do you mean by that? Well, I just mean that it's it's very expensive. Oh. So it's carried over from an old employer. So when we left, we had, to have, we had the opportunity to keep it. Mm -hmm. And we knew even back then, which has been... Oh, gosh, that was like 2007. Um, we knew it would be expensive, but we also knew we couldn't get it. And he generally, yep. throughout his career, has not worked for large companies. So we, yep. we kept it yep. as our, our only option. So how much is it? How much is the coverage and how much is the premium? It's $480,000 in coverage. And right now, because he just hit 50, we're paying $720 a quarter. Quarter. Okay. Okay. Well, it's $2,800 a year. Twenty nine hundred dollars a year. He's fifty years old. Okay, what's his income? His income one hundred and fifty. What's the rest of your financial situation? Um, I also work, so um, I make seventy five. So between the two of us, we're at two twenty five. Uh, we have a mortgage that is our only debt. Um, our kids are grown and through college and on their own and off my payroll, which is fantastic. Ding um, ding. Yeah. Huge ding ding. Um, we save fifteen percent in our retirement. Um, How much is in there? Uh, somewhere between one point two and one point eight okay. million. So the question you ask yourself is this, and you answer it with math, by the way, not a feeling. If he died and you didn't have any life insurance on him, and you had a million two, no kids at home, and a house with a mortgage, and you make seventy five thousand dollars a year, are you okay? And I think the answer is yes. How, how old are you? 50. Okay. As well. Okay. None of this million, too, you can access till you're 59 and a half, right? Correct. But if he died, it'd be an inherited IRA, uh, portions of it, and you could access it. And that's the scenario we're running out, not predicting. Okay. Because it's it's we're asking about life insurance, which is actually death insurance, right? So, right. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, can you make it on a hundred thousand dollars a year in addition to your income, and still get your mortgage paid off and still have a good life? I suspect you can. By the way. Okay. okay. All right, and there was one other thing. It just dawned on me. I also have insurance on him through my employer. Mm -hmm. You know, the max they'll allow me to do without any kind of medical review. Mm -hmm. So I think between that, that yeah, we. We, I would be okay, right? Yeah. Well, that's um, that's what you need to run out, and and okay. if the answer is yes, I'm okay. You know, I'm a millionaire with a paid for house, 
or or, or close to paid for house. I'm sorry, and the kids are grown and gone. Am am I okay if I, he leaves me no life insurance? Then that's when you are self insured, and you don't need it. Mm-hmm. You know, now if you want it, you want to keep it. You make enough money to pay three thousand dollars a year and keep this around for a few more years until you feel really good about that decision because you're right once you drop it you're not getting any more yeah and to dave's point it's not about how you feel about it run the budget see what your household expenses are could you make it by peeling off a percentage of what's in that inherited ira and i think the answer is yes based on your current income and expenses and lifestyle and so that's what we end up doing to call it self-insured and it it gives you some peace and that's why we teach you to do these baby steps and once the life insurance is out after 15 20 years you don't need it anymore if you follow our plan yeah and you know just be real sure that you're really comfortable because you don't get a second shot at this yeah in your situation so it's a good question it's a it's an it's an absolute yes or no though you have to make a decision permanently this is the ramsey show friend or family member that needs a daily dose of Ramsey advice in their life, let them know about the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast. It's a quick hit of advice about life and money in under 10 minutes. Check out the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host, George Camel, Ramsey personality, host of the Fine Print Podcast, where you can learn what happens in the fine print on the Ramsey Networks. He's my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225 as we talk about your money, your relationships, your boundaries, your mental health even. Yes, we dare to go there. And of course, your work and your careers. It's all about you and your life. It's called The Ramsey Show. 888-825-5225. Martin is with us in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Hey, Martin, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. How are you doing? Better than I deserve. What's up? I um I have a charge off loan uh, that was charged off, I believe, in uh, August twenty seventh. Or no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, it was charged off uh, actually not too long ago. It's a loan for eight thousand dollars, and I have a backstory with it, but. I just want to know what are the steps to um, tackling this loan, considering it's only been about six to eight months that I have not paid. Mm-hmm. What kind of loan? Uh, it's, a, it's just a personal loan at the time uh, before I was interested in investing and saving. Uh, I got a loan when I had a job to purchase a uh, dream car I wanted. Okay, so you owe eight thousand dollars to who? Uh, it's a it's an online lender called Lightstream. Okay, all right, I'm with you now. All right, George. So, why weren't you able to pay the loan? Uh, I got injured back in January twenty second of last year. I was a UPS driver. I fell out of the back of a truck and hit my back. Um, my Ouch. work did not work with me, and so I eventually got a lawyer to fight against UPS. Um, we finally settled after a year. I just got the settlement check about a week ago, and I'm holding on to it for certain reasons, and this is one of them. Okay. How much is the check? Uh, we settled for 15600 All right. And have you worked at all since? Uh, no, sir. I've, I've been injured, stuck at home. Okay. So have you had any income, any disability, anything like that? Uh, No, sir. What are you going to do for your career going forward? Um, 
right now I'm going back to school. I'm going for my, uh, my associates for business. Um, and hopefully going farther than that. As soon as I'm done with that, I have about five classes left for that. Are you living with your parents? With yes, sir. Yes, sir. My, I'm living with my mother. She's, she's been taking care of me, uh, since then. God bless her. Wow. How are you paying for the school? Uh, she, um, offered to pay for one class for it right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, I registered for two and luckily my school gave me uh, a $500 grant. Um, so the bill came out to a hundred dollars. Good. Okay. Very good. Do you have any other debt? I also, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, um, just before this call, I spoke to Nusenda, my, my banking, and I have two credit cards that are maxed out. Um, because I was paying for stuff after I was injured. Um, so those are maxed out at 2500 Each or um, total? Total for both credit cards. One's $1,000 and one's 1500 Okay. They, they, I tried working with them. My mom tried working with them, to, uh, seeing if they could lower it, if she was willing to pay it off. Um, unfortunately, the only thing they can do is lower the interest rate and the minimum payment. Are you current with them? Yes, sir. Okay, that's why. Yeah. All right. And that's all the debt? The plan. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Sir. Are you up and around where you're able to do something to create an income while you're in school? Right now, uh, after a year, my back is uh, starting to get uh, better. I've noticed some improvements. Uh, I still want to go with the doctors because in my settlement, I was I received a $20,000 uh, medical um I guess just for medical. I'm not bills, suggesting so. that you don't finish your medical care. I'm suggesting you go create an income. Are you able to do that? I believe so. Yes. Yeah, you're up walking around, right? Yes, sir. Okay, then you can go do something. You're not going to load trucks again. You're not going to be in a position no, to sir. do that. You've got a back injury. I didn't. I didn't suggest that. Yeah. I don't want you to go lifting heavy trays as a waiter. You're not going to be able to do that right now. Okay. Uh, you may someday, yeah. but right now you can't. But you could go do something yeah. that did not require physical labor. And there's lots of those things yeah. available right now. Yes, sir. And you need to create some income. It'll be good for your attitude yeah. and your pocketbook. And with the settlement check, I mean, we can clean up this debt today. Was there anything else you wanted to do with it other than I want you to cash flow the rest of your school for sure? Yes, sir. I uh, I was just – my mother and I had a plan. Yeah. Um, she wanted to try to settle the debts and try to lower them um, considering after we, – if we were to pay uh, everything off without trying to lower it, it would only come out to around five grand, maybe a little bit less than that. So, um, and I'm not sure how much interest rate or fees okay, or anything so here, like that. Here, here's what I would do. I'd write a check today and pay off your credit cards and get some scissors out and cut them up. Okay. Where you never use them again. Okay. The second thing I'd do is I'd call this company that you've got the $8,000 with and you haven't paid since August and ask them what they will take as settlement in full. Okay. And they will probably take five grand or four grand or something. They're probably going to make you an offer. And if they make you an offer yep. that's less than $8,000, take it and write them a check. Get it in writing yes, from them before you send them money, that they're agreeing to accept yep. X number of dollars as settlement in full. That's the uh, phrase you're looking for, settlement in full. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, is there a difference between uh, pay and delete? Pay and delete? Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, for it's a chart. I, I just looked a bunch of uh, YouTube videos and I uh, saw that pay and delete pay doesn't mean anything. anything. That's that's not even that doesn't even exist. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. They pay and delete means if you pay the loan off, they're going to delete the loan. Duh. Okay. Yeah. Of course they're going to do that. But no, you need the the legal phrase is settlement in full. You are making a settlement mm-hmm. and they're accepting it as payment in full. Yes, sir. So it's settlement in full, and you need that in an email or something in writing, and you keep a hard copy of it with a copy of the check that you wrote or the wire transfer that you did or whatever it was in a file for the rest of your life because this may come up again. Yes, sir. It may come up again. It may come back and bite you later, and you'll have to have proof that you settled this and got rid of it. Yeah. I wouldn't spend too much more time and energy trying to fight all this stuff. You took out the debt. 
pay it off and move on with your life, man. You've yeah. got a bright life ahead of you, bright future, and that's what we want for you. Yeah, Clean but if you've got debt. no debt hanging over you and you still got a little money in your pocket, which would be the case here, and you're in school and you're starting to create an income, now your future is brightening back up again. That's what I'm trying to put together, a total life picture here for where you're going. But you need to go create some income starting this week, sir. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're looking for ways to update your home without blowing the budget, I've got it. For years, I've been telling you about our friends at Blinds.com. Blinds.com makes it simple to shop top quality blinds, shades, and interior shutters from home with easy online ordering and free shipping. With Blinds.com, there's no need to renovate your entire home. Just change out what's on your windows with upscale choices like faux wood blinds, cellular, and roller shades or even outdoor shades. Plus, Blinds.com guarantees the perfect fit. Whether you do it yourself or you have them measure and install everything for you. Shop their latest looks and see how much you can save at Blinds.com today. The easy and affordable way to make your home more beautiful is Blinds.com. filing your taxes with the same software for years, but you're actually sick of that software. You're tired of the add-on fees, you're tired of the ads telling you it's free to do your taxes, but then it's not free, and you're tired of the free criteria not being met, and you're tired of them trying to sell you debt while you're trying to do, you were just trying to do your taxes. We think you deserve better. That's why we're offering Ramsey Smart Tax, so you can file your taxes online without paying more than you'd expect. Ramsey Smart Tax includes every form you need, no hidden fees, no surprises, no ads. We even have a promo code right now so you can file your federal taxes for free. And if you'd prefer to have a priority, have priority support and extended audit protection, you can go with our premium version. It's a whole twenty dollars. If you're ready to ditch the other guy's surprising fees and save on your taxes, go to RamseySolutions.com slash smart tax. Get started right now. RamseySolutions.com slash smart tax. Joe is with us. Joe's in Chicago. Hi, Joe. How are you? I'm good, Dave. Thanks for taking my call. How are you doing? Better than I deserve. What's up? Uh, so question is, uh, currently I am in baby step two. Um, I've got $17,000 in student loans left. Um, that's the only debt that I have. I live in Chicago with my girlfriend. Um, I make 60,000 a year. Um, I just bumped that up. I have two jobs now. Both are work from home. Uh, the main one is 40 secondary one is 20. Um, and my question is, so I've been in Chicago pretty much my whole life. Uh, my girlfriend's been here for about 10 years or so, and I'm pretty much fed up with living here. Um, and I want to get out and I want to move. And she's very much on board. Um, the only thing obviously holding me back is the student loan debt. And what I have right now is about $10,000 in cash. Um, and I know moving can be pretty expensive. We don't really have, you know, that many things. Uh, we rent an apartment right now. So I guess, you know, my question is, would it be smart to move now um, out of here? Because just mentally and emotionally, it's just not really good for me. Um, or just hunker down for another two years seems kind of unbearable at the moment. Well, two years would be ridiculous to pay off seventeen grand. Right. It shouldn't take you two years. You got to do it in a year. But I think you ought to go ahead and move, probably. I mean, what are you going to do with your job? Are you going to get a job before you move? Where are you moving? 
I mean, uh, the good thing about both jobs is that they're both uh, work from home, so I can I can work from anywhere. So when you say you're, you're fed up, I mean, if you're at home all day working, where is it, where is this coming from when you say it's taking a toll on your mental health? Well, I mean, I, even though I do work from home, like, you know, I'm still out in the city and, you know, just politically, socially with crime and, and everything else. And I'm, I'm looking Where are you talking about moving to? Uh, out west, uh, either to Montana or um, Oregon or Colorado, Montana being number one on the list. Would your cost of living go down depending on where you go out there? Yeah, it would. It would depend. I've I've got it narrowed down to a few cities. Um, it would be similar. It'd be a little bit more expensive. Uh, we've got a pretty sweet deal on our rents right now, um, but it, it it wouldn't be that much of a jump. Okay, it well, should be a drop. Yeah, de- depending on the city. I mean, almost anywhere in Montana is cheaper than Chicago. Yeah, that's kind of a. Yeah. I mean, I'm if, you, if you move into Portland, Oregon, maybe not. But if you move into any of the rest of Oregon, you should be cheaper than Chicago. Yeah. I mean, I'd go ahead and move, and then whatever money's left, we're throwing that at the debt, except for your $1,000 starter emergency fund, and we're no, getting I, rid of this thing. Yeah, I would think you would drop your cost of living if you're smart about how you do this, and that would accelerate you getting out of debt more than the cost of the move does. And so I, I'm going to load up the truck and head to Beverly, baby. Let's move. It's time. Beverly, Montana. That's where he's going, apparently. There we go. Have a good move, Joe. Peyton is in Houston. Hey, Peyton, what's up? Peyton? Hi, Dave. Can you hear me? Barely. What's up? Uh, I had a question for you. So uh, I've been a longtime listener, and uh, I'm actually just now kind of restarting on my baby steps. I am uh, $77,000 in debt, and that is around 20 in uh, 20 in credit cards, 17000 in student loans, and the rest is on a truck. Uh, I use the truck for work. So my uh, position with work, I have a, uh, a base pay of $600 a week. I get a $500 bonus each month, and uh, the rest is commission. And I'm looking to take home commission around eight, anywhere from eight to ten thousand a month. Now I am a 1099 employee as well, so thinking taking that into account. But my question is, how do I need to go about uh, with a budget, knowing that uh, knowing that I am partially commissioned? So you're talking about a regular income. How do I budget for that? Right, so uh, um, it's pretty. I've got it all. You continue. I've got it all lined out. Uh, right now, I am looking about thirty five hundred a month uh, is what should be going out, and that includes you know all bills, all debt, and uh, you know just living expenses, groceries, and whatnot. Uh, that sounds like more than you're taking home, doesn't it? No. Well, that's said, more than my uh, guaranteed salary. You got eight thousand a month coming in. Oh, right, eight thousand okay. to ten thousand just in my commission. Just in commissions. Okay. Right. Well, with a regular income, you've got a baseline, don't you? What's the lowest amount that you probably would make in a given month? The absolute lowest would be twenty four hundred. Okay, but that's and pretty rare. Right. Six hundred a week. Week. Has that right. actually? No, happened? no, 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 no. That that you're always going to get some commission. What's a horrible month look like with commission? Uh. A horrible month would probably, I would say, three thousand. On top of the twenty four hundred. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So your baseline, let's call it fifty five hundred bucks. So at that point, I'm going to list out the most important thing that needs to get paid. You know, that's going to be your four walls, your food, utilities, shelter, transportation. And so make a list of all the priorities in that budget. And as you get more money, the next thing gets paid and the next thing gets paid. So that might mean you don't have fun money for the month because that's probably at the bottom of the list. But you kept the lights on. And so that's how we talk about budgeting for regular income. And Dave can add some some flavor in here. But that's how I would do it because we know a baseline. Yeah, I, I would run a regular budget on five grand a month because you just about a hundred percent of the time are going to get that and then snowball the rest and and then and then no not snowball the rest you could throw the rest at the snowball if you want but then prioritize the rest and say okay whatever didn't make the cut that you'd like to do or want to do or should do with money that didn't make the cut for the five grand budget 
then you make a list of those things. You go, okay, if I make $5,001, what's that $1? What's the most important thing on this list that didn't make it in the regular budget? You see what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. And then you prioritize that list. And so if you make... You know, and you can go right down that list as far as the money goes above 5,000. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, we got through number 12 on the list with the extra 5,000 bucks we made this month because we had a $10,000 total month or whatever, yeah. however it works out. But run your budget out on a, a regular budget on 5,000. And then, uh, because you are 100% sure you're going to get that i mean that, that's like the worst case scenario and then you know make a prioritized list of anything that didn't make the cut in that five thousand dollar budget and work it down when the money comes in work it down work it down work it down work it down from there so hey really good question peyton by the way you can pick up the every dollar app and it'll help you do that when you're budgeting every dollar. You can jump in and make the changes as you go through the month, and it, it helps you to facilitate that. One of the things our guys are working on our programming up there is to build out the whole irregular income thing for oh, every dollar. Nice. But you can use every dollar by just going in and making the changes, and it's very easy to do and still track your money. You don't the, get a pass because you have a regular income. You still got to do the budget. You still got to have a plan and plan out further than the money can possibly come every month. And that way you always have, every dollar still always has a name. Life is full of firsts. and longest serving Christian health cost sharing ministry, CHM has shared medical expenses for its members since 1981. We believe you should have the freedom to focus on your health while being supported by a community of believers, giving you the opportunity to create many more firsts. Ramsey personality is my co-host in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the Dead Free Stage. Andrew and Tiffany are with us. Hey guys, how are you? Good, how you doing? Great, Dave. Welcome. Where do you guys live? Lafayette, Louisiana. Oh, fun. Welcome to Nashville. Good Thank to have you guys. So you. good to have you. All right, how much debt are you paid off? $81,928. Good. How long did that take you? About 21 months. Good. And uh, your range of income during that almost two years? It was 90 to 150,000. Good for you guys. What do y'all do for a living? We're both registered nurses. I'm a regional manager for a vascular access company. Mm -hmm. And I'm a nurse educator at a technical college. Oh, very cool. good. Very good. Good. Good careers. Well done. What kind of debt was this 82,000? It was a bunch of everything. Some <clears throat> uh, Eight student loans seven credit cards, a personal loan, car loan, and some medical bills. And pretty, a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> uh, pretty boring Wow, stuff. you guys are kind of normal. Yeah. Normal sucks. <laughs> it does. It wow. does. Wow. How long have you been married? Two well, and a half years. Oh, three. okay. So not long after that, uh, you look up and say, uh, normal sucks. We want to get out of this. What, how did this all happen? Tell us your Ramsey story. Well, we had got pregnant with our second son, and I finally did a budget. Um, and I realized that we couldn't afford to have another son. We couldn't afford to feed another baby because all of our money was going to payments. Mm -hmm. um, we both each had four, two jobs apiece, so four jobs as mm -hmm. nurses, making great money, mm -hmm. but everything went to a payment. Mm -hmm. And I sat down and I did a rough draft of a budget and I just cried and cried because I couldn't afford daycare. I couldn't afford diapers. We couldn't afford anything mm. um, additional to what we already had. 
Wow. Um, so I had started talking to him about um, financial peace. My sister had actually gifted it to me as a Christmas present, and uh -huh. it was in a closet somewhere. Of course. <laughs> and I dug it out, and we started watching the videos and getting psyched up, and we made that first budget together as a couple, and we both just looked at it saying, oh, my God. We've got to change something. We've got to do something different. We can wow. do this. That's incredible. So you went from sadness to fear to anger to excitement about finding a way out. Yes. All the yes. time. Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that budget is a wake-up call. It's like, ah! <laughs> and then you and then you start to go. Wait a minute! But we we can do that, and we can do that. It automatically leads you towards solutions, doesn't it? it right, does. right. And yeah. we noticed we started working together more, communicating more, and we just got on that same page, and we just tackled it with a vengeance. Yeah, way to go, you guys! All right, you did it. You are officially successful. You're not a theory. You actually did it. You paid off eighty-two thousand dollars in debt. Very impressive in twenty-one months. Now, people are listening, maybe watching for the very first time. Um, what do you tell them the key to getting out of debt is? I would say faith and submitting to the plan, first of all. And you need to take the time to sit down. And if you're married, sit down together. Write out all your debt on paper. And uh, don't judge yourself too much, but take a good long look at it. Come up with a plan and then write a budget and stick to it. And I would also suggest listening to this show as often as you can because every show you learn something new and it gives you the motivation and encouragement to keep going. Yes. You know, George, I agree with that. You ought to listen to every you know show what? we do. <laughs> I'll make time every for that. Every minute day. of every show we do is important. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love I'm that. kidding, but thank you. Thanks for the that's promotion. Really cool. Yeah, it's awesomeness. Very well, cool. it really kept us going. It really that's, well, you gotta have you gotta have stuff that's just feeding your brain because there's so much crap out there that yes. your brain turns into crap if all you do is turn, if you watch the TV all the time. Oh my God, your brain will melt. Exactly. It's just it's just awful. Yes. Uh, I accidentally turned on the news channel earlier today up in my office. They were trying to hook up a thing for the computer, and the TV comes on, and, and my brain almost melted just before we could get turned negativity. off. It was just, it was awful. <laughs> wow. So yes. I'm, I'm like substantially dumber for that three minutes of TV that was on. <laughs> but uh, yeah, oh. way to go, guys. I'm so proud That's of amazing. you. Thank How's you. it feel? Oh, free. Free, yeah. We are free. So good. Free's good. That's good. That's just heavy breaths into the microphone. Smile on her <laughs> face. <laughs> free. And just nothing can take us down. We just, nothing can come in the way now. Nothing yeah. can stop us as a family. We are a united front. And we get to change our tree forever, for our family tree forever, mm -hmm. for our young kids. So. More than this change your finances, it feels like a change your spirit. Yes. It does, yeah. Yes. Wow, that's incredible. And you did it for those, those little kids. That's yes. our why. That was your. That was the starting point, and that's what your legacy is going to be all about: changing that family tree. And you guys have done this. Yeah. Yes. You go from worrying about whether you can feed them or not to completely changing the family tree. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> they yes. look like they're eating okay. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's incredible. They're adorable. They are Thank very you. well done. Good job, you guys. All right, let's bring them into the shot. What are their names and ages? We, we got Hendrix is two, mm -hmm. going on 21. Uh huh. Jackson is five. Ah, okay. Very awesome. fun. Good stuff. All right, cool. That's your why right there. That's a good reason for doing it. And worrying about whether you can feed them or not led you to that first budget. That's yeah. the whole thing. That's good. Good stuff. So, Tiffany, I just want to ask you, because you were you were there. You were the scared mom looking at the budget going, we can't even afford diapers and daycare. Talk to that scared mom out there who's maybe doing a budget for the first time who feels just overwhelmed seeing all the payments go out. You just, you have to look at it. You really have to look at it as something bigger than you. You have to define your why. And your why has to be bigger than any distraction that can come in your way. Yeah. You have to have that fight, that grit in you to want your family to succeed, to want to be better and to want um, the best you can ever provide for your kids. And so for me, my why was bigger than anything. Car troubles, credit cards, people telling us that we couldn't do it. Anything that got in the way, it was just a distraction. And we just never let that come between us. Very cool.
Well, we got a copy of Baby Steps Millionaires for you. That's the next chapter in your story for sure. Without a doubt, that's where you're headed. And uh, also a copy of Total Money Makeover for you to give away and uh, to cause to be able to cause someone else to be disrupted in that way. So good stuff, you guys. All right, it's Andrew, Tiffany, Hendricks, and Jackson from Lafayette, Louisiana. 82000 paid off in 21 months, making 90 to 150 Ready? Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, Three two, two, one. one. We're, We're debt-free! Debt free! Oh, man. Those I kids are it. bouncing off the walls. He's ready. That's amazing. I don't know if it's the cookies we fed them or debt freedom. It's it's all of the above, brother. It's, it it's all. all it's all similar to caffeine when you're that size. That's true. <laughs> the adrenaline rush. That's incredible. Good, good stuff, you guys. Man. You know, uh, Andrew said something really important, George. Um, if the subject of money instantly causes you to be anxious, to have anxiety, to get stressed out. Um, I've heard people over the years say, well, I just can't do math. I'm just not good at this. I'm, there's a tremendous amount of shame. Like everybody else seems to have their act together but me. Now, people don't say that out loud, but that's that's stirred in a lot of people. But, you know, there's a balance between that and um, moving away from that kind of shame, but moving into... Okay, here's the facts. I've done, I'm doing some things that are destroying me. I've got to stop doing those things. And Andrew said, hey, I don't remember exactly how he phrased it, but he said, when you do the budget, you got to kind of accept the, the, what you've done, the but not be, not be so ashamed by it not, that you're overwhelmed, not be so condemned by it that you don't move forward. Yeah. I don't know how, exactly how he said it, but there's some, yeah. you embrace the reality of it without the shame. Instead of being crushed by it. Yeah, and you go, different. okay. I did three dumb things here. I'm never going to do those dumb things again. But that doesn't mean I can't move forward. I can't be successful. It just means that that's a learning process for me. Yeah. And looking into that mirror is the first step that everyone needs to take to change. That mirror is brutal. It's hard. It's, it's just hard. brutal. It's like watching our own video back. <laughs> that's true. We don't have to worry about that, though, because you listen to every minute of the That's show. right. Everything we say is on the internet forever. <laughs> Not scary at all. <laughs> this is The Ramsey Show. George Camel, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Our question of the day comes from Blinds.com. Find out for yourself why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer for custom window coverings. That's pretty amazing. You get free samples, free shipping, new promos all the time. You can save even more. Always use the magic word, the promo code RAMSEY. Today's question comes from Denya in Florida. She said, I'll be getting married soon to a man who is also previously divorced. We are 55 and 45. He has property that his parents left him that he would like to go to his children upon his death. I don't disagree, but we are struggling with a couple of issues. Is the best way to handle this to have a prenup agreement regarding the property? Also, I struggle with the fact that the place that will be our home doesn't really feel like my home. I worry that I'll spend the rest of my life improving the property only to have zero ownership of it when my husband passes. I am not sure how we deal with both of these things. Mm. Wow. It's a, it's a great question. There's, a, there, there's definitely a dilemma here. She wants ownership, but he wants it to go to his children instead of her. Well, she's the, the verbiage that she's using is not greedy and grabbing. No. But she makes a valid point. She's only 45 years old. She lives there 30 or 40 years, and they fix up the house with money that's also hers over the years, and then it's all gone. That feels unfair. And not only that, it, he dies, and she's 55 years old, has to move for what's been her home for 10 years at that point or yeah. 15 years or whatever the number is, right? And so she's got some valid points. Obviously, he does as well. 
um, because this is family property, and he would like it to stay in the family. His parents left him that property, so that does put it in interesting light. Hmm. Well, here's the thing. Okay, uh, here, here's the here's what's here's what's the the argument in my mind. It's as if the past is arguing with the future. Hmm. It's a good way to put it. And what are we going to place more value on this marriage relationship? or making sure this house goes to these kids. So I'm trying to think what I would do if I were in his shoes and I had some property, um, and how do we honor her and take care of her? I'm not sure. Uh, A prenup is obviously in order, uh, a will in conjunction with a prenup so that everything is laid out. But I don't know how to make sure she's taken care of if this property turns around and goes to them in terms of, A, a place to live, and, B, recouping. And really, you've got the emotional loss. If she lives in that home 20 years, it's more hers emotionally than than it is those kids. Yeah. And I guess I question why he wants to leave it to the kids, other than this is family property and I want it to stay in the family. But is she not family? That's what she's feeling like. Yeah, she's she's the stepmother. You know, it's the... It's so a Cinderella syndrome, right, yeah. um, in, in that sense. She's not the evil stepmother. But, I mean. Um, I mean, to the property, it doesn't seem like it's it's all that You know special. what? I, I think you've got to decide what you value here. What do you value more? He needs to decide. What does he value more? Marriage and the future with this lady? Uh, if so, I think they need to go buy another house mm. that the two of them own together. And they can keep this house and rent it, and it can go to the kids. Yeah, and I wouldn't live there. I wouldn't make my home there. It feels weird to choose the kids or the wife. That just feels like it's going to yeah. be uncomfortable. It's, and I, I think if you want to leave the, if you want to keep the property and the family, uh, but she can't make a home there because it's temporary. Yeah, um, and it's never going to be hers, and it's going to affect their relationship. Yeah, so you just can't place the stuff above the relationship uh, the relationship you know we arrange the stuff around the relationship not the relationship around the stuff mm. that's what i'm doing yeah well, it just seems like what is it you want to what is it you value the kids are going to be okay i mean you can leave the money there's a lot of ways to bless the kids but it feels yeah, but like it this feels property like this, it feels like this house is somewhat up on an idol yeah it and symbolizes so, something yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna rent it out or i'm gonna sell it and i will leave it to them in the will and it can be in a prenup. That's fine. No big deal. And I'm, But I'm not going to live in it. And I'm not going to make my future wife, my future life live there. Besides that, she may not want to live where his, his other wife was. That's true. Yeah. You know, that that's also can be weird. Whether she passed away or whether it was a divorce, we don't know. But um, that can be also weird. There's a lot of ingredients that could create a recipe for resentment here. And that's yeah. what I don't want. Yeah, I'm not living in that house. I don't, I'm not living in it. I think that's the answer. That's just me, and I'm trying to figure it. It's a very sticky question. Yeah, there's no clear it's answer. A weird. I don't know exactly what to do with it. It's not, you're right. It doesn't It doesn't come to mind. You go, oh, that's the answer. Because a prenup doesn't solve her. No. It only solves him. A will doesn't solve her. It only solves him. Desires and problem. Uh, you, you could even put in the prenup or in the will that any monies, any repairs or improvements done to the home are reimbursed to her Mm. upon his death out of the life insurance or something else. So you can make her right financially, but you can't make it right that she lived there for 20 years, it becomes her home, and then it's not. There's a true emotional Because she's not got control of her own home. Yeah. And that's just not going to, that's not going to work for me. Yeah. It's a valid question. Yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Hey, thanks for the, thanks for sending that in. That's a, that's a wake up call right there. So uh, is this a good idea? Prenups. Oh, in yeah. In general, we say don't do them. That's right. The exception is? If you've got a real high net worth and you've got a lot of assets and things going on, that's where we go, okay, maybe we need to look at this through a different lens. Yeah, because, not because of the spouse. In all my years of doing financial coaching, the, the potential spouse is not the problem. It's their crazy family. Yes. People are going to be coming the, out of the feel woodwork. entitled. Uncle Louie feels entitled because his niece married a wealthy guy or his uh 
nephew married a wealthy lady, whatever it is, right? And so it's just there's weird crap out there in these families, man. And so, and if you just go, if you just put up a wall and you go up, oh, there's a prenup and there's, you don't get anything. So, uh, and I recommend it just for clarity and for that. Now, I don't recommend a prenup where there's very small assets. I mean, it needs to be an extreme difference like one person has almost nothing one person has two million dollars or more something like that it's not you know like one lady called and said or emailed and said uh that my boyfriend wants a prenup to um uh, for his classic car oh wow i'm like don't marry him he, he, loves his, the car. he likes his car more than you yikes you know this guy's not marriage material he's he's weird so yeah, you know that's why I tell my daughter if they come in, you know, or my son if they said no, the they want a prenup for this little tiny stupid butt twenty thousand fifty thousand dollar item. That's just silly. Yeah. So it's so, got to be we're talking you know a few million dollars in assets and yeah. they make just an average salary. We want to make sure that those assets are protected from crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And this right here is has got a different element to it that is trying to make sure that the the family assets are passed through to the kids is all. That's all they were doing there. That's different than I've got to protect my assets from you, that I'm mar- this person yeah. marrying you, you know, that kind of thing. We don't really have to protect them from you, George. You're not. I hope not. You're not going to. I'm not a danger to anyone. You're not a danger. Not even, I mean, you're, you're, a little girl could take me in a fight, so you're safe. <laughs> you're safe out there, guys. Don't worry. <laughs> Oh, uh, man. Not true. Thank not you. True Thank you for all. the vote of confidence. I, I, I've seen you. You're vicious. You're a vicious. I'm scrappy. You're scrappy. You're scrappy. Oh, man. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Um, yeah, this idea that when you can agree on your spending, you've agreed on your future goals, fears, your value system, and when you can agree on things like the balance sheet, like who gets the house, and, and you know, you're coming into a a relationship, one of you's got an imbalance, uh, there is an imbalance of assets, one of you's got a bunch, one of you doesn't have, then, then those are the kinds of things that it's really healthy to talk about because when you do not get all those cards on the table played face up in a relationship, that's when you get into problems. Yeah. And we see that all the time. But and it's a different spirit that we're talking about versus the traditional prenup where you're going, hey, if this all goes south, man, I want to make sure I'm covered. Yeah, I always think of that George Clooney movie. You know. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. He, the uh, the massy prenup has never been broken. You know, it's just great. It was a great movie. A little payback. And uh, but anyway, yeah, it's that that's the ultimate prenup movie, right? Oh, I mean, yeah. There's clips from that we should use when we're teaching this. But we'll get the rights. Except we'd violate copyrights and that that kind of stuff. But anyway. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Good job, George. Good Thank hour. You. Fun times. People in the booth, the booth people did a great job today. Booth folk. Booth folk. That's what we call them. This is the Ramsey Show. Hey, it's Kelly, associate producer and phone screener for the Ramsey Show. If you would like to do your debt free screen live on the show, make sure you visit theramseyshow.com and register. We would love for you to come to Nashville and tell Dave your story. about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where net is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. George Camel, Ramsey personality, host of the Ramsey Networks podcast. The Fine Print is my co-host today. We're answering your questions about your life, about your money, your career, your mental health, your relationships. It's all right here, and it's all called The Ramsey Show. The phone number is 888-825-5225. Natalie is going to start off this hour in San Antonio. Hi, Natalie. How are you? I'm good. How are y'all? Better than we deserve. What's up? Um, well, I am looking for some help uh, for my mom, actually. Um, I'm active duty military um, and an only child. I'm stationed in San Antonio. 
Um, my mom, she's 64 and disabled. Uh, we're originally from Louisiana. Due to the hurricane season, that was just wild in 2020. Um, I moved her in with me just because the stress of running away from hurricanes and her disability was a lot. So I uh, moved her in with me in San Antonio. Um, and right now we're looking at selling the house. Uh, my question is, well, two, if you don't mind. One, are there any tax laws that maybe we need to be aware of? Or And two, with this being basically all she has as far as retirement, what's the best thing to do with this money? Um, since it'll be probably 100000 maybe a little bit over. Okay, what will the house sell for? Um, a little over a hundred thousand. Okay, so it's, pay, it's paid sure. for. It's paid for. Okay, there's no yeah, taxes. Sir, I'm sorry. First question's easy. There's no taxes. Single person okay. can make up to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars profit on their uh, on their primary dwelling, their residence, and uh, they don't pay any taxes at all on it. And so that's her situation. Awesome. She's going to pay zero taxes. Now you're in the military, sir. So what happens when the military moves you? You're just going to move her? Uh, well, I bought a home in San Antonio, so she'll be living here. If you move off? Yes. Who's going to take care of her? Uh, well, her limit, her disability isn't to the point where she's confined to a wheelchair or needs assisted living at okay. that time. Um, she can still walk around. like It's more affecting her joints and bones, but she can still move around, feed herself, get dressed, things like that. Okay, so she's going to live in this house regardless of where you live. Yes. How old are you? I'm 25. What happens when you get married? Huh. I mean, that's not on the table right now. But um, I actually have not thought about that. Okay. I just got to have a plan for mom. And, um, right. And I, I you know, I, I don't want a plan where, uh, yeah, where, where there's, where we're, pushing things together we don't have to so it sounds like in the near term in the next like five years you're not going to need housing for her other than what you've not already got enough. the housing other than she could stay with you probably for that long anyway right but um right you know she might need this money to buy a um a retirement uh condo in a retirement community or something should you get married and start your family if you don't have her in the house at that point i'm not trying to kick her out i'm just trying to make sure we've all got options so that means we're just investing the hundred thousand right she doesn't need the money does she no sir no she still has social security and i mean that's that's really all she needs right now or what, what's coming month. in from social security what's her total income per month um right now it's about 1500 a month okay um, but she has no housing I mean, I, but she has I, no housing cost no, no. But she might one day. Right. But I'm saying today, the 1500 a month you can live on if uh, – since Natalie's furnishing food, shelter, utilities, right? right? Yeah. 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 Which is yeah, not a good long-term game plan. Louisiana. Yeah, the Louisiana utilities are, are all off. She might pay for um, – Maybe less than fifty for uh, the home insurance. Yeah, but I'm saying but, um, if the, if the house is sold and she's living with you, you're covering utilities and housing, right? Right. Yes. Yeah, and so the fifteen hundred will go a long way. Then she'll be okay without having to mess with the hundred thousand. So let's let's sit down with a smart investor pro and get that hundred thousand invested, um, because it's probably going to be five years before she needs it. Okay. So click SmartVestor Pro at RamseySolutions.com. Find the person that we recommend. Sit down with them with your mom, and she needs to understand it, not do it because I said to or someone else said to. But I think a good long-term investment's in order there. Yeah, and you, based on, you know, we've got an equation about every seven years, if you got about a 10% rate of return, that money would double. Mm -hmm. So after seven years sitting there, I mean, if you did nothing to it, that could be $200,000, right? which could get her a property in seven years. Yep. Absolutely. So I like this plan. And, and so there, there's a lot of different options here that we've got. But yeah, just the, the trick is not to burn through that money. That's the trick. That's why I was asking about the living on the 1500 and making sure that we're, we're able to do all that. So good question. Thank you for joining us. Tom's with us in Kansas City. Hey, Tom, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Thank you, Dave. What's up? Well, I've been listening to you for, I don't know, 20, 30 years. It seems like forever. I don't know life without you, really. Um, 
but I, I've been following your your principles loosely. Well, I mean, I'm you. not as rigid and as rigid as probably I should have been, and I could be wealthy probably if I did. But I want to know right now if my wife and I, if we're anywhere near, we want to retire early. We want to start, you know, living and giving like no one else. When can we start that? Do you have a paid for house? Yeah, five hundred thousand. Awesome. And you got no debt. You got the emergency fund. No debt, 150000 in cash, $2.3 million in retirement. You guys are incredible. How old are you? Thank you. Thank you. How old are you guys? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm 54. She's 60. Okay. Man, well, you guys have done really well. I mean, now's the time. What are you waiting for? What's holding you guys back? Really? Um, I don't know. I just don't, I don't, you know, I don't know. I don't, you know, as far as you know, she gets health insurance for us because it's federal. So that that insurance that that will be good, but um, we're we're looking at maybe a year or two, and then you know we can start giving some money away um, uh, to people. I want to give it to people who like Secret Santa Claus, Santa Claus type thing, you know, just yeah, spontaneous just anonymous. Somebody and, yeah, yeah no, anonymous, or you just go to somebody who you know needs it and could use twenty dollars. Mm-hmm. Well, here's the thing: so, um, what you do is you just say this is the income we live on, and it includes our giving budget. And this is the income we live on, and it includes our fund money and our our splurge money. And this is, you know, and, and when you look at $2.3 million, um, if you said, I'll oh, just round numbers, 10% would be 230000 a year be your income. Mm-hmm. You don't want to mm-hmm. budget that, I don't think. You're not that guy. But, I mean, if you if you lived on 100000 bucks a year, you could do a lot of giving on that, right? Yeah. If you're not yeah. talking about giving away a million dollars, then yeah, you're ready to go. If you're yeah. talking about giving away twenty bucks, you, you sh- you're late to the party. You should have already been doing that. So, uh, but but yeah, I, I I think you're in a position to enjoy the money. You've lived like no one else. You're you know you just need to sit down and do some math. And what Sharon and I do is we just give every dollar a name, and then when we give that, we don't worry that we're not going to eat because we gave away too much, or we're not eating so much that we didn't give away anything. You have to balance it all out and just have a little game plan. That's all it takes. If you're considering a career in technology, I recommend Bethel Tech, and I'm not alone. Here's what Brendan said. Before Bethel Tech, I was driving Uber. Within four months of graduating, I got a job paying $60,000. About two years after that, I got a remote job that pays me $130,000, all thanks to what I learned at Bethel Tech. You could be next. Get started today at BethelTech.net and get $1,000 to $2,500 off of your tuition. Again, it's BethelTech.net slash Ken Coleman. season is upon us i know try to contain your excitement no one likes doing their taxes especially when you realize what the big software companies are up to every year these companies lure you in by saying you can file your taxes for free then when you're knee deep in the filing process they sucker punch you with upcharges, loan offers credit card pitches it's just not a good experience there's a better way to do it it's called ramsey smart tax this is our online tax filing software. With Ramsey Smart Tax, you get all the deductions, all the forms, every tax break you deserve, and the best part is the price. Ours is already much lower than the leading competitor, and you won't find hidden fees. Plus, this year, we have a promo code that will truly make it free to file your federal income taxes. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash smart tax to get your promo code and file without the surprises. RamseySolutions.com slash smart tax. Chad is with us. Chad's in Lansing, Michigan. Hi, Chad. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. How you doing? Better than I deserve. What's up? 
Well, me and my wife kind of kicked an idea. We all the last couple of years kicked an idea of building a house. We bought this 52-acre farm uh, back in a few years ago, and we paid that off. And then we, there was a house that came up for sale next to it. We bought that. It's kind of a small house, and, and we kind of rent, we rent it out now. But our dream is to kind of build a house. And I just, you know, 370000 and it just makes, you know, it makes you real nervous. <laughs> we kind of live below our means, and we just don't know if it's the right decision or not. Hmm. What's your income? Uh, we make about 130000 How much money you got? Uh, I got 100000 in my savings. I got a $30,000 emergency fund. And I got 60000 in my business account. Wow. About retirement. What was that? How much in retirement? I don't have none. That's another thing I was kind of worried about. How old are you? 41. Okay. Yeah, time to get in gear. I know it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So where are you guys living right now? Well, a friend of mine passed away about 10 years ago, and his son was uh, lives, he was in a wheelchair and needed a little help. So I lived in that guy's house, and I just make sure this guy has what he needs. So we don't have no expenses there. But he's 61, and when he does, if something happens to him, we got 30 days to get out. So we kind of, I don't know, it seems like we're 40. We kind of want to get our own place, and I don't know. No. Well, if you put a hundred thousand down on three hundred seventy thousand on a paid for piece of ground, um, you have a two hundred seventy thousand dollar mortgage, making a hundred and something thousand dollars a year. You ought to be okay. Think so. Yeah. Fifteen year fixed rate you. or less. Yep. So should I take my like the hundred thousand savings? Should I pay this other house off, rental house off? Oh, you owe money on my it. land for equity. You owe money on yeah, it. I owe fifty. I owe fifty two thousand. Yeah. What's it so worth? What's I, it worth? It's worth about 150. I was hoping maybe sell it to one of my kids here in you know four or five years. Mm-hmm. Well, I'd give you another hundred if you just sold it. And then you put two hundred down on your two on your three seventy. You'd only have a one seventy mortgage. Yeah. Yeah. What's the income on the rental? Uh, I get eight hundred bucks a month, which that's, that's low, but a couple of guys I know that work for me. So yeah, I'd sell it. I put two hundred down. On the, I put two hundred down on the three seventy, and I start gr- break ground on the three seventy immediately. Okay, and that'll pro- give you some yeah, peace it. around these numbers. If that's yeah, I, I, the more you, they, I want to move you towards getting this this new house paid off more than I want you to be a landlord renting something out for eight hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just sounds more fun to me. I can visualize five years from now. You're sitting, I can visualize you're 45 years old, 46 years old, and you're living on in this $370,000 house on 52 acres, and it's all paid off, but you don't own the rental. whoop de doop dee I like that plan a lot better. And then getting gear on this investing stuff. And, yeah, get, uh, get start putting 15% of your income away immediately for retirement. Maybe I mean, step you work four. Another 20, 25 years, I mean, you could absolutely retire a millionaire with no problem. So... I like this plan. Good point. Done. Good point. Baby Steps Millionaire's book is coming your way. Hold on. We'll have the team pick up and give you a copy. It's the number one bestseller I just did called How Ordinary People Built Extraordinary Wealth, How You Can Too. But I think you need to go ahead and do that and start building now. Um, 30 days to get out is not a good plan. And uh, if you get the house finished and it's time to move in, you'll have to make other arrangements for your friend that you've been caring for there. Uh, Your guys that are living in that rental are going to have to make other arrangements because you're getting ready to sell it. And that's what we're doing, dude. And it's not cold. It's just, you know, you need to move your stuff towards your goals first. And um, when you gather everything up and point it at that one goal, you're going to get there pretty quick. Angel's with us in Orlando. Hi, Angel. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Thank you for having me. How you guys are doing? Better than we deserve, bro. What's up? Uh, a little bit of background. I'm an immigrant. I have five years in the country. And uh, just right now, my wife and I, we're starting to understand the economy, how the money works here. So um, I just have my two trucks that's about like $85,000 in debt. And I thought that was perfect because everybody have a loan on their car. So I started hearing your podcast, and I realized that I have to do something about it. But I wonder if that would be a good idea just pay off these trucks or get rid of them. So I'm just looking for your advice right now. 
I love it. Well, you know, that, that is the American way, right? You move here and you get to get a car payment as part of it. So what's your income? <laughs> yeah, exactly. What's your income, uh, my Angel? My wife and I... My wife and I will make 170, and I have an extra between 20 and 40k bonus by the end of the year. Awesome! Why don't, why don't you just pay these trucks off? That's what I thought, but you know, you always say that you know, get rid of the trucks, get a bitter. So I just was a little bit confused, as you know. Well, the only reason to do that is you got other debt other than this. No, sir. My house and my trucks. You got any money? Uh, my house. Do you have any money? Yeah. Yes, I have around 10K on my bank account right okay. now. Okay, not much. All right. Where's your 170 going? Did you just start making that or are you blowing it? No, we just start breaking that this year. Uh, we get a new job. We're a construction manager, so we get this um, cool. piece of payment right now. What are the okay. trucks worth total? If you sold them today, what would you get? Around... Uh, 65, 67. Yeah, they're, they're under half your annual income. If I were you, I'd roll up my sleeves and get them sold. Or get them paid off, I'm sorry. I would just lean okay. in and say, all right, we're going to pay these off in a year. Because you're not used to making 170 grand. Don't act like you make 170 grand. Put it all on the trucks. Yeah, this is really new for us, and we're really excited about the money, but I think to like, we yeah, need to don't, pay this don't, don't blow it. Put it on the trucks and keep the trucks. That or sell them. I don't care. If you want to sell them, that's okay, and move down in truck. But you do need to be rid of the debt in the next 12 to 18 months, one way or the other, either by paying them off, by getting on a real tight budget. It's not that tight. What were you? What did you make two years ago? About 70. Yeah, go live on 70 and put 100 on the trucks. Yeah, that's, that's the mad I do. I just, you know, want to check it out with you and give you advice. Yeah. Okay. And based on the numbers, Angel told yeah. me, you've got uh, 65000 in worth on these, and you got eighty five in debt. So he's underwater on these trucks. So it, it's not a – you're going to be in a predicament even if you sell them. You're still going to owe twenty grand. Yeah, they might actually be worth more than he thinks they are. That's right what I'm wondering, now, too, in this market. In this world. <laughs> so, um, Especially yeah. a truck. Either way, I, I, I think what you've got to do is you just woke up and realized the American dream, parts of it might be a nightmare, and we don't want to live like this, so we're going to do this. I, I just love, he comes here, yeah. five years he's here, he's making 170. It's incredible. And just incredible. Way to go, Angel. Opportunity's still go, out man. there for people who are willing to work for it, turns little, out. Little man can't get ahead. Angel got ahead. Angel got ahead. Shut up. You can do this stuff, people. Hang on. We're going to give you, Angel, we're going to give you a copy of Total Money Makeover, show you how to do all this whole money thing top to bottom. It'll walk you through exactly what to do. But in your case, I would keep the trucks and pay them off in 12 months, 14 months, something like that. Lay yourself out a budget. Lean into it. Make it a goal. Be done. Keep the trucks and pay them off is what I would do. This is The Ramsey Show. George Camel, Ramsey personality, is my co-host in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. Eric and Morgan are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? Hey, Dave, we're doing, doing great. great. Where do you guys live? Lawrenceburg, Kentucky. Oh, just up the road. Cool. Yeah. Welcome to Nashville. Thanks. Here Thank to you. do a debt-free scream. How much did you pay off? Paid off $94,408. Good for you. Way to go. And how long did this take? 25 months. Good. And your range of income during that time? I started around 80 and kicked it up to about 110. Good. What do you guys do for a living? I'm a police officer mm -hmm. and also in the uh, Air National Guard up in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And I'm an occupational therapist. Oh, very good. Good. Okay. What kind of debt was this 94000 Uh We paid off uh, some student loans, a mm -hmm. couple cars, a cell phone, just uh, a lot of normal. <laughs> you guys sound like you had a little bit of everything. A little yeah, bit. You, all right. Cool. 
you know, well, welcome to not being normal. Welcome to weird. Yeah. Glad to be here. Yes, very nice. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Wow. Okay, so what started this journey? How'd you get connected up with this Ramsey stuff? Well, it was fall of 2019. Our oldest was a couple months from turning 10, and I just kept thinking, if the next 10 years go as fast as the first 10, he's going to be 20, and we'll have probably two in college, and there we were you know, 10 years or so out of college ourselves, still paying on student loans. And we really wanted to change what, what we were doing so that when they're in college that we can, you know, help them and get them started into adulthood without debt. Amen. Um, That's cool. So yeah. um, That's kind of weird. Yours is following <laughs> you up from behind and you're staring down the barrel. There's right. coming at you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, that's a double yeah. whammy. If your kids are taking on debt while you're still paying yours off, it's a bad situation. Absolutely. Yeah. We yeah. did not want that. So he was away with the military and I never sleep very well. So I thought, what better time to figure out exactly how much debt we were in than 2 o'clock in the morning when I couldn't sleep. And after... I saw that number. It just it made me sick to my stomach. And, Not be able to sleep at all. And yeah. then I really couldn't sleep exactly. So um, when he got home, I you know kind of laid it out and was like, "Hey, this is how much debt we're in. And if I downloaded the Total Money Makeover on Audible, you know, would you listen to it on your commute?" And he agreed, and that's got us started. Wow. And you would just listen. You said, all right, I'm willing to sit down for six and a half hours and listen through this thing. <laughs> I might have been a little hesitant. He was a little hesitant at first. <laughs> <Yeah. but laughs> he said, I'll do it on 1.25 speed. That's, that's all you're right. getting yeah. out of me. Yeah. Oh, that's it, uh, amazing. It uh, took me uh, a couple weeks maybe to get behind it. Uh, but once I figured, once I listened to it, I figured, well, if we're going to do it, we're going to go all oh, in. Man. And yeah. uh, just were you get it losing done. sleep? You seem like you were kind of like, I feel like everything's fine. Did you feel any of the weight she was feeling? Uh,. I feel like I think she was she has a hard time sleeping when I'm gone. But uh, I think once I listened to the uh, to the book, I was just just ready to go and get it, it made over sense. With. Yep. Yeah. Wow. That's cool. Cool. Very good job, guys. How's it feel now that you don't have any payments? Uh, the burden off our yeah. shoulders. How long really you been married? About 13, 14 years. Going on 14, 14 years. years in the spring. Yeah. Never debt free any of that time. No, no. Never. not until now. <laughs> not no. until now, yeah. Yeah, that's a whole different way of looking at life now. Absolutely. It really is, yeah. Wow. Very cool. Yeah. All right, tell people what the key is. You pay off 94000 in 25 months, two years you did it. Yeah. Almost a hundred grand. That's mm -hmm. impressive. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What's the key to getting out of debt? We never made a budget. And, until uh, then. I mean, yeah, yeah we. Uh, until then. Uh, <laughs> until then. That was the oh, key. Yeah, that was the key. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Oh, the key is never make a budget. No. <laughs> make a budget. Uh, but, yeah, the, the problem was is we never made we a never, budget. Yeah. So, you know, we made good money, and we were paycheck to paycheck trying to figure out what bill was going to be late. And, uh, you know, it really just took us sitting down, making that budget, and uh, getting everybody on the same page so that we can make some progress. Yeah. And for me, also, you know, the budget, but also just knowing your why and having that reason that, you know, kept you motivated. And like, you know, you all say you're doing it for the so that. And that's really what kept us going was, you know, so that we could help our kids through mm -hmm. college so that we can travel while they're little and make memories and so that we can plan for retirement. So, you know, knowing that why, you know, keeps you going when it gets hard. Mm. It's a big deal. Mm -hmm. It's a big deal. You got to have a, a reason more than I just want to be free. Yep. And because uh, it gets too tough. I mean, that's a hard two years. Y'all had yeah. to be real careful, real smart, and sacrificing. A lot what of sacrifice. What did you give up that was the hardest thing to give up? We uh -huh. like traveling and doing things with the kids, uh, going on trips and things like that. So it, uh, we were fortunate. We, uh, you know, spent some time with family and they'd helped us out and, you know, do little trips or, you know, maybe take us out to dinner from time to time. Uh, but, you know, tell them, you know, that we can't do that right now. We're going to yeah. do it later. Yeah. Yeah. That's that, like I said, we weren't, you know, it was no, we're not going to take any trips now. But once we're through this, then, you know, we'll we'll have a good. We'll make good up trip. for it. Yeah, that's exactly. Right. That's awesome. That's incredible. You guys it definitely it's amazing. The theme today is I had to look in the mirror and mm -hmm. look at the reality of my situation and have the why that kicked that all off. And oftentimes it's family, it's the kids. Yeah. And you go, I don't want my kids to experience what I've experienced, what I grew up in. And now they get to live in this brand new legacy that you guys are building. Yeah. That's yeah. incredible. Way to go, you guys. Thanks. Thank you. Way to go. Very proud of you. What was the hardest part for you? That? 
I'd say so. Yeah, yeah. just po- postponing uh, all the extra fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, eating more dinners at home. You know, mm-hmm. coming home late at night after work and just wanting to stop and pick up a pizza. But you know, hey, did anybody hey. know you were doing this? Do you have outside oh. outside cheerleaders? Oh yeah, we pretty much told anybody that would listen <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that we were going through this. And um, but yeah, our families were big cheerleaders. Our kids, um, you know, they sacrificed a lot too. I feel like you know, I one of my extra things that I did was I taught online in the mornings and at night and if he was at work or if he was gone you know they would help out with our now three-year-old the big kids would help you know watch him keep him entertained while I was teaching and sometimes they missed out on sleepovers because of it and so I mean they sacrifice a lot and but but now we can scale that back I think they're gonna be okay I think so yeah (laughs) all right (laughs) well well done we're very proud of you guys you're incredible Thank very thanks. good job. Very good job. We've got a copy of Baby Steps Millionaires for you, our latest number one bestseller on how ordinary people built extraordinary wealth, how you can too. That's your next chapter. We want you guys to go on and be Baby Steps Millionaires now. Oh, yeah. Thank you. It's, you're right on track to do it. You're doing all the smart stuff. Very well done. And a copy of Total Money Makeover for you to give away, get somebody's mm-hmm. life started. That, you got it started with a TMMO audio, obviously. Yes. So that's a Total Money Makeover. I'm using inside initials <laughs> here. Yeah, the mm-hmm. lingo. Gotta yeah. let people know. Yeah. Oh, that's it. So, all right, bring the kiddos in. Tell us their names and ages. Yep. Okay, we have Carson, that's 12. Macy is 10. Uh, Nolan is 3. And Trevor is 9 months. All right. Way to go, guys. <laughs> Looking good. Very fun. Good stuff. All right, Erica. Or, I'm sorry, Eric and Morgan. <laughs> Carson, Macy, Nolan, and Trevor from the Lexington, Kentucky area. $94,000 paid off in 25 months, making 80 to 110. Count it down. Let's hear a debt free scream. All right. Three, two, one. We're debt free! how you do it we call it a scream because you you're got supposed a scream. to scream good job you guys don't you dare show up here and not give me a full-throated scream i like it i like it i like it well done man i'll tell you the the common theme among people who build wealth and is a they get out of debt b they're working together c they're on a budget but the o- overarching theme is two big things they have a why They have a reason for doing it. Simon Sinek, our friend, wrote the book Start With Why. And there's all of this creates just an intentionality. You know, what what she said or he said there early in the in the time they were on the stage there was we made a lot of money, we never did a budget. And um, we had no idea where it went. But as soon as we started telling it what to do, it was magical. It's amazing how that happens. When you pay attention. You go, oh my gosh, we make too much to be this broke. Where is this going? Let's find out. Number one problem with Americans' money, they don't pay attention. Mm. They don't pay attention. Once you start paying attention, you start doing smart stuff. Nobody does stupid on purpose. It's usually by accident. That's right. This is The Ramsey Show. Scripture of the day, Lamentations 3:25. The Lord is good to those who wait for Him, to the soul who seeks Him. Winston Churchill said, "Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts." One of my favorite Churchill quotes is, "Success is going from." Uh, failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm. <laughs> Man, he was just a quote wizard. Yeah, my computer guys call that iteration, but you know, <laughs> going I, from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm. I like Churchill's it. better. Yeah, I, that's definitely it. Definitely it. Casey's with us in Billings, Montana. Hi, Casey. How are you? 
Hi, Dave. Um, this is a dream calling you to get your opinion on something. So thank you so much for taking my call. Our <laughs> honor. How can we help? Um, uh, long time listener. I'm honored. Okay. Uh, I am 34. My husband is 43. And we own over $2 million of real estate in a uh, kind of touristy area in the mountains, which, as you can imagine, the last few years has just blown up. Um, one of which we own outright completely. And we have that as an Airbnb. And we're getting about $50,000 or more on it. And on our main house that we're living in, we own we owe I'm sorry three ninety that three hundred ninety thousand on it, which the passive Airbnb money is completely going to the mortgage. We're like, no, this is our it's our only debt. We don't want to have that mortgage, and it's so daunting if you just pay the minimum <laughs> required every month. So we have a plan that we're going to knock that down in like six years. Well, now my husband, who is a contractor, he has worked to the bone since he was a child. He's, he just grew up doing like hard labor. He, his body just can't take it anymore doing construction. And um, though his business does very well between, you know, uh, on a low year, maybe 150000 to a good year, maybe 300000 a year, it's almost costing more to stay in business because you can't find employees. The equipment that you purchase is not made how it was 10, 20 years ago. It falls apart and you can't get parts to fix it. So we're kind of bleeding money on the business side. And now he's like, well, wait, wait a minute. Wait, 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 Stop, 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 stop. Okay. The, the premise is, is that contractors are all losing money because of employment, because of employees and equipment. Bad premise. I'm not, I'm not buying. It's. It's kind of, um, I mean, he's making money. He made $150,000. Yeah, no, he's Profit. definitely making money. Profit. But, yes. Profit. Yes. Okay. Sure. But, at but is he is point, he still working with his hands? Yes. He, Why? He is. Why didn't he delegate it? Well, we, have, we have two guys, and one of them, um, they, all have their, they all have their specialties. Why does he uh, not delegate it? hire someone he, to do the work he doesn't want to do anymore. He's tired of it. We would love to, but where we're at, it's very rural. And I would say construction's probably um, the last industry that, um, you know, the youngins want to work for, it seems. Um, we, we've we had a very hard time finding people. The most we've ever had is three. And um, I think it's because your husband's it, a gum picky and hard to work for. Well, I mean, not necessarily because we we don't really have any barriers to entry. Um, we have even okay. Listen, everybody's hired, got labor no problems in every market in America yes. right now. Yes, everybody does. Yes. But the whole premise yes. that you can't hire somebody as an overall concept to do the work ever is a ridiculous premise. Yeah. Okay. 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 Well, if you want to quit, kind of quit, but find a better reason. Well, this is my reason, actually. That was just kind of like a side segue. Well, you know, hey, uh, it, you know, business, you know, it's not what it used to be business. And it's not, it's not more we're losing money, but it's, you know, when you buy a nail gun, for instance, and it lasts about 30 nails. And then you have to buy a new one. Not only is it you're going to have price, to quit you know, exaggerating because you're kinda, killing me here. Well, nail uh, guns don't last I'm thirty really nails not, and then fall apart. I'm really not exaggerating. We have had the worst luck with all equipment. It's unbelievable. I mean, it's like you know, and okay, let's just stop. You know, what, what, uh, what, what's your question? Okay. Okay, so we have the opportunity to rent out our main house that we're living in now and make 50 or if not more, cause it's twice the size as the other one. Um, and we were thinking, well, at that point we could sell our business and he could just retire and do nothing and do nothing at 43 years old. 
Well, that that's why I was calling. Yeah. Because I don't. It's not a financial question. That's just a dumb life plan. Okay. Because you don't you don't want to do nothing for forty five years of your life. If he well, lives to ninety, I, I was. Yeah, I think I I was thinking maybe you'd say that, but um, it's kind of like um, he's you know he's worked day in day out to get to this point, and now he's just ready for a change or even to take like an extreme an extreme pay cut and just do something fun um he's just he's tired can you do something of... fun and also make money doing it i think that's a possibility yeah casey are yeah. you working in, in the business with him or are you working outside of that i help with certain things but i have um i have like a i have like a craft business that i do and I make. Do you live in Billings? A month. Yes. Okay, you're not in an extreme rural area. That's a reasonably well, size. That's a reasonable Billings. size town. I was there not long ago. We're we're um, a little bit outside of Billings. Yeah, but I mean, it's if you're a little bit outside, you have access to the economy of Billings to do another career of some kind. You're obviously both done with the construction business. Sell it. But for God's sakes, go find something to do with your life. Airbnb is not the God's call on your life. And besides that, that's going to at some point end. That's not that this is not this is not got a long shelf life. I mean, it might have a five year shelf life. It might have a 10 year shelf life, but it's not a good 20 year plan to run an Airbnb uh, because it, it's it's an unproven process. It, it, it's proven right now. And it's doing real well. A lot of people are doing really, really well with it. I'm not trashing it, but um, you're making unrealistic money on this real estate that I don't think you're going to make throughout the rest of your entire 45 years of life. So, no, we're not going to quit work and throw up our feet and sit on the couch and drink beer for 45 years uh, and live off Airbnb money. No, I would not do that. And Casey, uh, I'm feeling a lot of this starry-eyed about the rental properties and what we could make if we got another rental property. And it sounds like you guys are, are pretty over leveraged because you didn't pay off the rental properties. You've got your primary mortgage. Now you're going to have that mortgage and you're going to move somewhere else. And they're going to go, what if we rented this out and we move somewhere else? And it just feels like you guys are just chasing your tail trying to make this yeah, money. You're, you're exaggerating on the one side with the Airbnb being better than it is. And you're you're killing me with your exaggeration over here on how horrible the construction business is. Over a because the construction business is actually the best it's been in 30 years. Yeah. If you want to make money, this is a great thing. So all this is is the hyperbole around it. So, yeah, cut the drama back. And, and if you want to get out of the construction business, that's fine. If he's tired of it, I don't have any problem with that. It's hard work. I'm not arguing that. But find something else to do before you sell the business and then get the business sold and move on to something else. And you're not in, a, in such a rural area that there are no opportunities. Again, that's overstated. Uh, Billings, Montana is a sufficient city to have a sufficient econom economics to to create a, a career for yourself, you know, doing something else, uh, whatever it is you want to do. But Airbnb is not your answer. Hope that helps. You bothered to ask, we'll yeah. bother to answer. George, good hour. Thank you. Fun that time. That puts today. this hour of the Ramsey Show in the books. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. This is James Childs, producer of The Ramsey Show. Did you know The Ramsey Show is one of the most popular podcasts in the world? Subscribe or follow today wherever you listen to podcasts.